I'm David Can here. We're still looking at simple harmonic motion, and we're looking at graphs of simple harmonic motion. We have an object vibrating in air, and the variation with the displacement of the acceleration of the object is shown. And it's not a sinusoid. It's not our familiar shape for sim simple harmonic motion. But it is simple harmonic motion, because we're not describing the object going up and down and up and down and up and down over time. We're looking at the acceleration of the object over displacement. And we see that as the displacement grows, the acceleration grows, but negative. And as the displacement goes backwards, as it grows in the negative direction, acceleration grows in the positive direction. And that's important for the first question, because it says to state and explain two reasons why the graph uh, above indicates that the object is executing simple harmonic motion. Those two reasons are what we just mentioned, that the uh, Oops, excuse me for a second there. There, there are, uh, yeah, the, what we just mentioned, that the acceleration is opposite to displacement, as shown by the negative slope. That means as one increases, the other decreases, so they're opposite. As one, as one moves in the positive direction, the other moves in the negative direction, so they're opposite. And the other, re the other reason that this is simple harmonic motion is that acceleration is proportional to displacement. And that's shown uh, by the fact that the graph is linear. And then we want to use data from the graph to find the frequency of the oscillation. Um, so we have information on acceleration on the y-axis and displacement on the x-axis. And we want some relationship between the two that includes frequency. And that's going to be that acceleration is equal to negative omega squared x. Negative omega squared is the proportionality constant between uh, acceleration and displacement. And we can use that angular frequency, omega, to find the regular frequency. Because the angular frequency is 2 pi times the frequency. We'll rearrange this equation to solve for the frequency. And we get uh, acceleration, negative acceleration divided by displacement. Take the square root and divide by 2 pi. That gives us the frequency. So that's uh, 2 pi times the square root of some acceleration and some displacement. Well, it turns out that this equation is true at all times whenever you are uh, exhibiting simple harmonic motion. And so it should be true for any point on this line. So all we need to do is pick one point and use that to uh, plug into our equation. So let's pick this one. I like this one because it, it's clearly on one part of the uh, grid. Uh, we see this section and this section. There's a thousand units between here and here and 10 delineations. So we know that that's going to be negative 2,900. And this is right on 0 0.6 millimeters. Just checking our scale up here. Yep, we're in straightforward meters per second squared, so no scaling necessary. We'll come back down here and plug in what we determined. We have negative acceleration, so that's negative, negative 2,900 meters per second squared. And we'll divide that by 0 0.6 times 10 to the negative 3 meters. Plug all that into your calculator, and you should get about 350 hertz. The last part is to state the amplitude of the vibrations. Well, coming back to the graph, we see that the graph does not continue forever. It's not a complete line. It's a line segment. It has a beginning and an end. And that's implying to us that as the particle oscillates, as it moves out, it slows down, stops, turns around, and goes back. So it's kind of oscillating like this. And there's a maximum to how far out it goes. It's the same maximum as the point that we chose in the previous uh, section right here. 
So the furthest distance out is 0.6 millimeters.